Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm going to get right into the message, whatever the cards want to say. I'm being guided to use the Kipper deck, and this deck is its really specific. Like, whenever I use this deck, it usually ends up being for a very small energy group, like maybe 10 people or less. So, something specific for someone who wants to come out here. As always, only take it if it resonates. Never try to force it to fit, because as I've said, I do channel multiple energy groups on here. So, some of these readings will probably be for you, and some of them won't be. Uh, use your intuition. And it, again, I appreciate your comments, likes, shares, subscribes. I really love hearing from you guys. I really appreciate the support on my channel. Thank you guys for being here. Okay, so what's the message for someone? Privileged lady, lovers, great fortune. Ooh, okay, so it's a good message, it looks like. Community. Sun, wow, you have like a lot of cards talking about money. You have three cards here. Great fortune, sudden wealth, privileged lady. If you have been financially struggling, I don't see that happening for too much longer. I also see this as abundance in all areas of your life, not just money, but friendships coming into your life too and possibly a new soulmate. Let's see what else the cards want to say here. And it's coming in quick. It's like sudden wealth, unexpected income. It's like you have opportunities that I feel like maybe you've been manifesting these things, but they haven't really been real. It's just been one of those things where you've kind of been dreaming about it and you've been, it's like you've been wanting something, but you, you don't, I don't want to say you don't fully believe in it, but you've almost adapted to not having it, whether it's money, love, maybe all of the above. It's like you've kind of gotten used to just whatever it is that you have. And so I feel like this wish fulfillment has almost just been a dream to you. Like it's something that you've been hoping for. It's something you've been putting the energy into manifesting. But up until now or, or the near future, you hadn't actually seen any uh, physical results yet. You hadn't actually seen any. It's like all the it's like the seeds have been planted and you had faith that they would, you know, you would, they would sprout eventually, but you, you didn't see it. And you almost part of you was like, you know, is it ever going to sprout? Is this ever going to happen for me? And it looks like whatever this is, it is finally happening for you. Pathway, toil and labor, message of concern. Family room. I feel like a prayer that you said while you were, you were either depressed or you were dealing with financial poverty because there's this toil and labor energy and there's this message of concern. And I almost feel like this is more spiritual. I mean, for some of you, it could have been a physical message. Like it could actually be a family member or friend helping you out financially or emotionally supporting you. But I actually feel like for like 90% of you, this is actually a spirit guide here, or this is someone from your soul group that just heard you energetically. It's like, maybe you cried out. You're like, I can't deal with this stress anymore. This loneliness, this, you know, financial struggle. I'm tired of being in poverty. I'm tired of this cycle. I, I want out of this dead end job, or I want, you know, a, a better job, a higher paying job, or I don't want to be alone anymore. And it, it's almost like someone energetically delivered that message to a higher up it's it's like someone I, I almost feel it's really interesting like what I'm channeling here it's it's almost like there was a spirit around you that actually heard your prayer and took it to an even higher up spirit so like let's say that you have like friendly house spirits around you or you have um and I'm not I'm not saying they're like low level spirits like I feel like they are positive spirits whoever they are but it could be like um I don't know like an ancestor or uh, a spirit guide or, or just you know like I said like a house spirit it, it's like some kind of spirit that's around you but they don't have full authority I mean they love you and they support you could even be like a soul group member that um you know, is around you a lot, like you guys telepathically channel each other. But I feel like they didn't have authority to make these changes for you. And it actually feels like 
they vouched for you. Whoever this was, it feels like they they stood up for you. There might have even been a um, soul contract that needed to be renegotiated. Like there might have been a soul contract. Uh, it's like maybe you bit off more than you could chew because that does happen. I feel like when, you know, a lot of these higher spirits, it's like they don't they see the bigger picture. So sometimes when we get depressed, when we get in this toil and labor energy, it's not that they don't care, but it's like, they're still, you know, they're, they're eternal. You know what I mean? It's like they, they've, a lot of them have lived thousands and thousands of years, some even longer than that. So when they see us, you know, going through a rough few months, it's just, it looks, I think it looks kind of small to them in the grand scale of things. But I, I feel like whoever this, this spirit was, that's like a, a friend or family member, or just, you know, a familiar spirit that telepathically, energetically was around you, they heard your cry, they heard your prayer, they took that to a higher up to a higher level spirit. And I, I feel, you know, what I was saying about like, there's like a soul contract, I feel possibly for some of you that needed to be renegotiated, because maybe you bit off more than you could chew before reincarnating, you're like, okay, I can handle this, but things changed. Maybe you went through more stress and more heartbreak than you were originally meant to go through this lifetime. Like you went down, you originally got back to your, your soul path, but you might've went down different paths. Like, let's say that you had a few, um, soulmates that you were meant to learn karmic lessons from and it wasn't meant to last too long but you kind of held on to it and it dragged on and it became much more heartbreaking than it needed to be so it's like now that you're almost manifesting you know your actual true love you're you're exhausted or maybe you had like dead end jobs jobs that you held on to longer than you needed to hold on to and now that you're actually like manifesting you know career money you know positive things abundance it's like you're still really tired out from from you know going off your path a little bit and dealing with those those karmic patterns longer than you originally planned on dealing with them so so i mean basically things just changed the path wasn't quite as as clear and direct as it was intended to be before incarnating so so anyway so i i feel like this this spirit went to a higher up spirit like they went to a god or a goddess that's working with you or they went to um like an angel or just just some higher level spirit that has authority basically uh, take it as it resonates and they basically said, you know, he or she has has been through too much. Like this soul contract, we need to, like, like they petition them. They're like, we need to rewrite this soul contract. We need to end this soul contract, or we need to. It's it's like a council meeting. It's like your spirit guides came together in the higher realms, and they're like, okay, this, this, um, it's possible. It's also possible you just weren't learning the karmic lesson the way that they were teaching you, like. Maybe it's like this pattern was repeating again and again and again, and you weren't getting the lesson like you planned on getting it, of course, before you incarnated. But like, you know, things change a bit when we actually get, you know, down to earth. Um, and so I feel like maybe they talked to them and like there was like a, a you know, a, a council meeting of all your spirit guides. And they're like, hey, like he or she isn't learning the karmic lesson this way. It's actually taking them further off their path. It's not helping them. We need to go about things in a gentler way or in a different way. We need to take a different approach. Um, we need to get more in tune with what they're needing and wanting on a soul level. Maybe this karmic contract even caused like soul level damage. And they're like, okay, this isn't like, we need to fix this. We need to, we need to, you know, change course here and rewrite this contract. So, so yeah, anyway, I, I basically feel like something, shifted for all of you it might not have been a, a karmic contract for some of you it could have just been simply like them seeing you in pain or, or suffering or struggling or you were like stagnant or or stuck in some kind of situation where either you weren't making enough money or you just weren't happy with your job or your environment um and maybe you've been having a hard time getting yourself out of that on your own so it's it's like you know this higher up spirit was petitioned like hey please intervene because they had the authority you know this the spirit that you know cares about you they didn't have the authority to make those kind of huge changes in your life so they went to a spirit that that does have that authority um I also almost feel like it's very uh it was very brave for them to do that because I feel like this spirit is like like I said it's like a god or a goddess or an angel 
Um, it's it's like a very high level spirit. So I almost feel like it was very brave of this this. Uh, it's like they the spirit of, that's around you or this it could be like a deceased loved one even. It was very brave for them to like go to this higher level being because this higher level being could have been like like get get out of my face. Like what do you you know what I mean? Like what do you do? Not saying that they won't work with us. Like of course they work with us. Like I work with, you know, gods and goddesses as well. But but it's I still just feel like it took a lot of guts because a lot of times I feel like this spirit isn't um like, it might be hard to contact them directly sometimes unless you regularly work with them. And I feel like, you know, you're probably connected to this god or goddess, but I feel like maybe um, this soul group member or this 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 other spirit, like, might not have known this this deity or this angel as well as as your soul, soul knows them. So it was kind of like coming to a straight, like a higher level stranger and, and saying, hey, like, you know, kind of just being very assertive and being like, hey, like, you know, this is you work with this person, please come through and help them do something like this needs your attention now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really beautiful that you have that support and that whoever that is, is like brave enough to make that kind of like take that kind of risk and take things into their own hands for you because they don't want to see you suffer anymore. They don't want to see you struggle. Tell me more about this. But whatever it is, it feels like it, it feels like there's like a, a timeline shift or there's like a drastic change that's come because of it and that's about to come. It's like your prayer was heard. Whatever you were struggling with and you were asking about, like it, it was it was heard and taken to a higher up. Tell me more about this. It could be multiple areas, too, because I am getting finances, but I'm also getting love because it's like all this abundance. It's like you have community, you have lovers. So so it might have been like, you know, I'm tired of it, like, you know, multiple things. Like I'm tired of this stagnant job. I'm tired of, you know, not having the emotional support I need. Um, I'm tired of like being single. Like I want to meet someone finally. Like I want to meet the right person for me. I don't, you know, I, I don't want to go through this anymore. Like help me out. Um Please tell me more about this. Thief. Courthouse. Ooh, what the hell? Divine, what is this? Divine justice, I guess. Thief, courthouse, and imprisonment. What? Say what? Okay, hold on. Oh, Ma hmm. maybe there was an energy. This isn't for everybody, but for some, there could have been like a, like a demonic spirit or like a, like a energy vampire or someone around you that you weren't fully aware of. Like you didn't know that they were stealing from you energetically. Like it could have been someone that was trying to, um, it's like you were praying. It's like you're like, why can't I find love or why can't I have money? Like, why is everything, you know, just going to shit in my life? Like, what's going on? What's happening? And I feel like maybe you just it's like you prayed for, for something to happen and you just felt like you were trapped, like in this never ending cycle, like the same scenario, same kind of people over and over again. And you could have had some type of, yeah, like thief, energy vampire, someone that was Either it could be stealing money even, but also just I feel like more than anything, stealing energetically from you could be like a hater, like a friend that's, you know, and you would probably know, like you probably would have felt something off, like you wouldn't, like intuitively, you wouldn't have felt, you know, completely close to this person or you wouldn't feel like you could trust them with good news. But possibly someone, you know, sending you the evil eye, someone that was jealous of you, uh, could also just be someone that just wanted to steal your light like maybe they weren't even jealous but they just they, they saw you as an energy source for them and they might have been very sneaky about it so it's like you didn't even realize how much this person was was draining you keep in mind with energy vampires too they're not always you know the the depressing you know victim and i mean you know i get depressed and i express that depression sometimes there's nothing wrong with that but you know, like the type that like they get depressed and they like they put all of it on other people, like not just venting, but it's like they it's 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 like they 
they go on this downward spiral, but they they don't want to see other people doing better than them. It's like instead of trying to figure things out and trying to heal themselves, it's like they want other people to be sad like they are. You know what I mean? But you know, psychic vampires, there's, there's different types of psychic vampires. It's not always that type. Sometimes the, you know, the person that you talk to at the bar, um, that's super bubbly and friendly, and they just keep going on and on and on. They're stealing your energy too at times. Not always. I mean, someone can just be really outgoing. So don't, don't question every single person that's outgoing. But like when you feel like you're in a conversation and you feel your energy being drained and you can't get them to stop talking, like you're not even having a conversation. They're just talking at you and you're not even really invested in the conversation there. You know, that could be a psychic vampire uh, energy exchange. It's like they don't care if you're involved in the conversation. They're just they're taking your energy um, so I just want to put that out there because I think a lot of people have like a stereotype of what psychic vampires are and yeah, that, that is, you know, that that's a common factor, but, uh, psychic vampires can come in all different forms. You know, it's, it's important to tune into your body, tune into your energy because they have different techniques. They're not all the same. Anyway, uh, whatever this, this was, this person or this, this dark spirit, I think feel like it's being dealt with I feel like it's been imprisoned like it's been removed from you like the higher-ups have come through and they're like okay we need to get rid of this this soulmate or whoever this was you might have even had like a father figure a mature man type come through um this could have even been the mess the person that got or the spirit the the deity that got the message of concern about you, it could have been an older male uh, figure, an older male deity. Could be someone who's very fatherly towards you, like a very fatherly spirit guide um, for some. And, and yeah, it feels like he put his foot down here. Like he saw what was going on here and I feel like he intervened and he blocked this, this spirit from, from messing with you further. All right, let's wrap this up. Anything else? Yeah, he was told about this. It could be like a soulmate, like it could be an ex of yours or something like an abusive ex that wants to control you that was trying to tune into your energy. Maybe you never cut the cords between the two of you because um, it's like this. I feel like this toxic man was like thinking about this person, male or female, take it as it resonates. But it's it's like you see how he's like thinking about her and this older, this mature man is like concerned. He's like, oh, no, like I'm going to put distance between the two of them. You're not you're not doing that. You're not going to steal his or her energy. Yeah, they they called for judgment. <laughs> they called for judgment and then there's coffin. Like they put an end to it. They put an end to it. Um, so yeah, you have a lot of protection around you. As always, if this resonates, I really appreciate you guys commenting, um, liking the video, uh, maybe sharing if you feel like anyone on your channel need or on your uh, on your channel on your like social media needs to hear this possibly as well. And uh, please subscribe. I do these pretty frequently, so thank you guys for watching.